And we'll, we'll go to the one article I wanted to highlight here for all of our listeners. Title is A Roadmap and Back, or sorry, A Roadmap Back and Forward, uh, published on the 31st of May. This is on redstate.com. Uh, you come up with sort of the roadmap of, uh, especially with everything that's happening now with protest across the country and really around the world. I got to tell you, it's uh, lighting up all over Europe and Canada as well. Uh, you come up with like a roadmap with specific policy prescriptions. I think that's that's one reason I wanted to have you on is like you've actually sat down and said, here are the legislative things that we can actually do now to alleviate some of the problems that protesters are discussing and talking about and a roadmap going forward. Um, so if you could just like explain that a little bit. Uh, first one, obviously, economic empowerment. Second is education, equality, constitutional citizenry, and then quality of life enhancement. If you could just go through some of the ideas there that you listed. Well, I, I think that people are, are feeling the angst right now and, and they're, they know that they're upset. But as I've heard earlier this week, it's about going from anger to action. So when you start looking at some of these things, the economic opportunity, the, the constitutional citizenry, the true essence and embracement of the fact that we are all American citizens, there are certain constitutional rights that we're going to enjoy, and there's a way to respect those rights and still have law and order, still have a civilized society, and still be able to optimize the resources and talents in all different parts of our, of our country. The reason why I laid it out from economics to education to a sense of civil rights and then moving forward from there is because those are the things that people are missing right now. And the divisiveness that we have seen with the two different Americas when it comes to the criminal justice system or to the occupational gaps that we see between blacks and whites in America, or even if you look at the, the state of education between what you see with public schools versus those that go to other schools. And whether it's in North Carolina, we have some um, scholarship programs here. We have a little bit more of a robust one in Pennsylvania, and there are other states that do it even better than we do, such as Florida. When you start talking about how do you start bringing people back together, no one's talking about specific solutions. They're willing to point fingers. They're not willing to look at solutions. So I wanted to show folks that there's a way back to what America could be and what we say we want to be, but also forward. How do we move forward past this moment in time? There are a lot of people that feel as though this is never going to get any better than this. And, I, and I'll be honest with you guys. I think part of the reason why you're seeing so much frustration and so many protests, because people are saying, we keep doing this, it's never going to get better. I wanted to show people that it can get better. We moved through the 1960s. We got past the Civil War. We got through Jim Crow. We got through 9-11. We got through the malaise of the 1970s. If you study American history, there's always a way to get through those tough times. And it starts with good legislation, but it only comes with good legislation and sound, inspiring leadership. Now, ideally, we'll have a new generation of leaders that can come up and provide that inspiration so that the good legislation has a chance to take root and create a better America. Oh, that's great. And, and uh, I would really... Um ask all of you guys, we'll link to it in our show notes, this mm -hmm. article specifically that, that Lenny discussed. He's got a lot of points. 